Hello, and welcome to Module 2 of the RBC Canadian Women Entrepreneur Awards workshop on how to write an award-winning application. If you're just joining us for the first time, congratulations on being nominated. All of you should have your application by now because you would have sent in your intention to apply. If you haven't done that, go back to Module 1 as we take you through the steps to do that and send in that application, that intention to apply right now. Once you've done that, you'll receive an automatic email from us with the rest of your application. The first step in your application is selecting the right award category. So that's what we'll talk about in Module 2. We get a lot of questions on this, and it does make a big impact on how successful your application is. So we'll give you as many insights as we possibly can on how to choose which one is best for you and some tips on which are the most competitive award categories. So, selecting the award category. Let's just look at the number one uh, rule here. You can only select one. So there are this year six different award categories, and you'll notice that we have a few new award categories. So we're going to take you through all of these, what it takes to really select the best one, and we'll dive in starting now. Are you with me? Okay. The Deloitte Startup Award. This is for a business who is in the startup phase of their career stage and their job stage. So now let's think back to the eligibility criteria that we explored in Module 1. So you do have to have a business that's three years old at least. But in this category, you can't be older than five years. So it is a small window of time that the judges are looking for in this category in particular. But what the unique thing that they're really looking for is a company that has had exceptional growth in their early stage, and you'll see in the first bullet point, have you experienced an above average rate of growth in those first five years? But what's next? That's what they're also looking for. Does the future plan for your business seem realistic and achievable? Do you have a plan to continue your success? And is your business poised for second stage growth? So if you can say yes to these three bullet points, then this award category is right for you. What will be important in your application is that you focus on sharing your accomplishments and success and milestones to date as well as how you plan to continue with that momentum going forward. The RBC Momentum Award. This is for someone who's really growing at a rapid speed. Let's look at the first bullet point. Have you achieved over 10% yearly growth for the last five years? Now this is required. This is the point of entry into this award category. Uh, my insight to you is that this is really just the point of entry. Um, most applicants into this award category have at least over 20% yearly growth for the last three years, but you'll see that the finalists and the winners are showing well above that into the hundreds and 200% yearly growth. And that's certainly dependent on an industry or the economic environment, so you don't have to have that because the judges will compare you within your industry and within your region to make sure that they're comparing apples to apples as much as possible. But definitely think about if you are right for this award category, have you got extraordinary growth at the top line? The second bullet point, have you positioned your business for extraordinary future growth? So similar to that last award, they don't necessarily want just what you've done to date, but what you plan to do in the future to keep it going. And number three, have you expanded management, your team, and your employee base? So that's just the baseline of asking the question, do you, are you growing the business along with your success? Do you continue to put people and resources in place to continue that momentum? So again, if you can say yes to those three things, this is the award category for you. The TELUS Trailblazer Award. This is 
I'll give you some insight, one of the most competitive award categories that we've got because it really describes a lot of businesses and a lot of women-run businesses in that we often find a gap in the marketplace and create something that hadn't existed before because we want to make lives and industries and communities better. So knowing that it's very competitive, let's take a look at the qualification criteria. Have you identified and pursued a new market? Have you captured a niche market or set a new trend? Have you demonstrated innovation in growing your business? So what these three points are getting at is, are you a leader? Are you coming up with new things? And whether or not they're completely new products or services, or if it's a, a new approach to an old way of doing business. I use the example a lot of one of our past winners, Cora Suflidu, who runs the very successful franchise, Shea Cora's. Have you been to that amazing restaurant? I love it. She's an example of a trailblazer, not because she created breakfast food. We all have eggs and yogurt and toast for breakfast, but she had a new and innovative approach. She added fruit. This was something that wasn't done. She turned a diner into a really healthy, nutritious experience and grew her company in a franchise model. So again, if, these are, if you can really answer these three questions and know that you're a true trailblazer and trendsetter, then this is the award category for you. Next is one of our new award categories. This is the TPH Charitable Giving Award. This is for a company that is a not-for-profit or non-governmental organization. If you are one of those, which you have to be in order to apply for this award category, you should absolutely apply. There are no other award categories that will accept NGOs into them. Everything else has to be a for-profit business. So if you are an NGO, this is your award category, full stop. Number two, have you been influential in improving the quality of life for people in the community? And number three, are you a champion? for philanthropy, volunteerism, and social change. This is what we're looking for with this award category, and we're very excited with our partners at the Printing House to open this up this year because we know there's some really great leaders, female leaders in particular, who are doing entrepreneurial things in the NGO space. Next, we have the Profit Award for Excellence in Entrepreneurship. This is, in essence, our Lifetime Achievement Award. There are only a handful of applicants in this category for reasons that is very few of us at this level. But I will say, if you are in this category or listening on behalf of someone in this category, invest the time in your application. The judges do evaluate the care and thoughtfulness of your answers in addition to your achievements to date. They won't just speak for themselves. So if you uh, can answer yes to these questions, let's take a look. Have your entrepreneurial endeavors generated an uncommon degree of economic benefit? Have you created multiple successful businesses or run current, your current business for more than 10 years? What this is looking to do is to see if you're one of those serial entrepreneurs in that you can't help yourself but having a great idea, starting a business, and then selling it and moving on. And this is the only award category that will recognize someone who's created multiple businesses, but you don't have to have run multiple businesses. So it's just a way for us to ask you that question, but you don't have to. What we're looking for is a real true entrepreneur that they just can't help themselves and they're really creating a track record for success. The third bullet point here, do others consider you to be a lifetime achiever? And number four, do you have a track record of growth and profitability within your businesses? If you can answer yes, this is the category for you. And last, this is our other new category this year. We are so excited about this one because there are a lot of small businesses that are run by women who are out there and now we have a special place for them to enter and compete among themselves as they grow their businesses. It is the Micro Business Award. This is for a company whose top line 
or gross revenue is less than $1 million. So you can't apply if you are over $1 million. You would be applying to one of the other award categories. But if you are under a million, I would absolutely definitely suggest <laughs> applying to this award category. The second thing you should ask yourself, have you experienced gains in your business that indicate future potential? Have you had some early wins? Are you getting excited? <laughs> and number three, would access to media coverage, leading women entrepreneurs, and business and professional experts substantially help your ability to grow? Who wouldn't answer yes to that question? But this is the type of business we're looking for, someone that we can really help along by providing them with the recognition that they would get by entering into these awards. So you're halfway there. Keep going. This is the time to select your award category. And you might want to ask your banker, your lawyer, or a second-in-command if they think you selected the best category for you and your business. Then ask your questions or submit your comments on our LinkedIn group. Because remember, there's lots of fellow applicants on there that are also willing to help you and are going through the same questions. There's a lot of past candidates and winners that are on there that could help you, and a lot of our sponsors and supporters who absolutely want to see you success. So don't hesitate there. And finally, join us in Module 3 for the big section, the Business Overview. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.